I got a phone call from a producer that said, I just sold a beef to my neighbor to put in their freezer, and they wanted to know how much of the various beef products they should expect to take home. I didn't have a good answer for their question. Could you help me out? All right, so let's begin this discussion using a 1,300-pound choice yield grade three animal. And we're going to use the assumption that we've got about a half an inch of back fat, average muscling, 13 to 14 square inches of ribeye. Um, and we would expect that animal to, to have a live animal to carcass yield of about 63%. There is a little bit of variation around that. All right, so at 63%, we would expect about an 820 pound carcass. Again, 805 to 830 pounds could be a normal range. All right, now when we take the carcass and we put it into retail cuts, we could expect about another 63% yield. Now, the variation in the range is much bigger, it's 55 to 75%. All right, so we would expect a 1300 pound choice yield grade three steer to give us about 515 pounds of retail product, but the range is 450 to 615 pounds. Now, another way to look at this is to say, okay, what's the live animal? To retail conversion. It's about 40%. Again, there's a fair amount of variation. So we would expect in that same 515, 520 pound retail yield takeaway. All right. But again, the range is from about 440 pounds to about 610 pounds. Now, in a typical 820 pound carcass, we would expect just short of 30% of it to be in the chuck. Okay. So that would be about 7.5% of the carcass weight would be in, in chuck roasts and steaks, about 11% in lean trim, and about 9% loss, okay? And the losses are really the fat, excess fat, bone, etc. that would be trimmed away. In the round, the round would be just short of 22% of the carcass weight. Roasts and, and steaks from the round would be about 11.7% of the carcass weight, about 5.5% lean trim would come from that, and about 4.5% loss. In the loin, we'd expect just short of 17% of the carcass weight, about 9.6% of the carcass weight would be in roasts and steaks, about one3 would go into lean trim, and about 5.8% would go into loss. Ribs would be just short of 10% of the carcass weight, uh, about 5% roasts and steaks, uh, the carcass weight, about 1.7 would go into lean trim, and about 3% would add to the loss category. And then in the miscellaneous category, we'd have about 24% of the carcass, okay? About 9.5% would be lean trim, and about 14.6% would be uh, losses. And those losses would include excess fat, not used in hamburger, bone, kidney, liver, tongue, oxtail, etc. All right. So the total take home of an 820 pound carcass would be about 275 pounds of roasts and steaks, about 240 pounds of lean trim, and about 305 pounds of loss, okay, of bone, etc. So the take-home product is roughly 63% of the carcass weight and about 40% of the live weight. Now, there could be some variables, all right? Animal weight is an indicator of animal finish, all right? Animal composition, uh, how much muscling it has. Dairy animals are going to provide less take-home product than beef animals because their lean-to-bone ratio is lower, all right? They got more bone-to-lean ratio. Back fat is an indicator of carcass fat content, and so if we get super fat cattle, okay, coming in with significantly more than half an inch of back fat, there's going to be a lot of excess fat trim, okay, that's going to come off of that carcass and not be in a take-home product. Dressing percent is an indicator of fat and gut fill, so if we're using live animal to take home product calculation, okay, if the animal was just drank five or ten gallons of water, had just had a full meal, all right, obviously that's going to come off with the GI tract, and it's not going to be reflected in carcass weight. So that 40% live to retail conversion is going to be off. Marbling is an indicator of carcass quality, obviously. Animal age, okay, uh, really relates to animal tenderness, and we, we talk about a maturity cattle being less than 30 months of physiological age. 
Another variable is how you ask the, the processor to cut your product. Okay, are you going to do a bone-in or a boneless product? In other words, are you going to have New York strips and fillets, or are you going to have T-bones and porterhouses? All right? That bone weight is either going to go in the barrel or it's going to go home in your freezer. All right? So realize that that's a variable. Whether you add the tongue, liver, heart, um, oxtail to your take-home product or a lot of producer or a lot of consumers say, I don't want that product, and so it oftentimes goes into a soup kitchen or a food pantry. What do you do with the brisket, the flank steak, the roast, the short ribs? Are those going to be knife time, okay, to, to trim them up, or are those going to go into hamburger, all right? And and what percent percent lean do you want in your hamburger? All of those things are going to are going to be a variable in how much product you take home, depending on your cutting instructions. So the bottom line is that the take home can be variable based on many factors, but we would expect roughly 63 uh, percent of the carcass weight would be in take home product, or roughly 40 percent of the live weight going home in take home product.